This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about zero inflation, clown world, and the Fed. I've just been catching up on news that I missed while I was out on vacation. I had noticed that the CPI numbers came in much better, in other words, much lower than people were expecting, and it looks like CPI has moved down from about 9.1% to 8.5% if you look at it on a year-over-year basis. And so I was shocked to see when a lot of people sent me a couple quotes here. The first one from President Biden saying that July had 0% inflation uh, and last week's booming jobs report underscore the kind of economy we're building, blah, blah, blah. And then the press secretary as well at the White House saying the same thing. We just received news that our economy had 0% inflation. Now this is, while technically true, I would say is quite misleading. If we look at month over month, CPI, the June reading is basically the same as the July reading. So that is true that month over month inflation has been 0%. And this is a sign, of course, that the Fed's rate hikes are really beginning to take hold. But to do to make a political comment like this and claim that there's 0% inflation when everyone in their daily lives is obviously feeling something very different, this is also a very unorthodox way of quoting inflation, doing it on month over month. It's much more common to do year over year, which gives you a little bit more perspective. The other really weird thing about this, of course, is to be claiming that inflation is 0% while at the same time claiming that you need to pass some laws to reduce inflation. You can't really have it both ways. If inflation is 0%, then why do we need the Inflation Reduction Act, which was just signed into law by President Biden. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and share this with a few friends. So this is not meant to just bash the current administration. We are cursed with very bad politicians in the U.S. really for the past 20 years. And I do get it that politicians of all parties spin the news in their favor or try to spin it in their favor and say misleading things all the time. But I would say that that's not the most interesting thing here. Because if we think about this in the context of the Fed's monetary policy, we know that the Fed is already extremely tight. And we have this inversion between the two-year Treasury note and the 10-year Treasury note, two-year yield at 3.25%. The 10-year is trading below that, which is a very sort of unhealthy, unnatural thing to be happening at 2.96%. So we have basically 29 basis point inversion here, which is quite is quite severe. And it's one sign that the Fed is tighter than it should be. This is the rates market telling us this. And this is a sign that the Fed has already hiked interest rates too far already. As I've said in previous videos, it's also very unlikely that Fed funds goes above the tier two-year note level. So if the two years at 3.25%, Fed funds is currently at in a range of 225 to 250, and they raise 50 basis points, that would take us, uh, well, if they raise 75 basis points, that would take us right to where the two-year note is trading at 325. If they just do a 50 basis point hike in September, and you can see the probabilities associated with this, that would take us just under the two-year note. So either way, the bulk of raising rates is already done. Another way of thinking about this is if we look at where Fed funds reached during the last rate hiking cycle, back in 2019, it plateaued at 2.5%. And that's basically where we are now. And if the Fed does indeed hike in September, and a lot of things can change between now and then, we'll have another CPI report, we'll have another jobs report before that. But if the Fed does hike, this will be the first time in very a very, very long time that they've hiked above the previous Fed funds uh, rate high. So if they peaked at 2.25%, and they go here to 3 or 3.25, they will have gone above that. And if we take a look here, we've always seen lower lows and lower highs. So this is a little bit unusual as well. The other thing that makes it more striking is having rates this high, and it's they're not absolutely high, but they're relatively high for an economy that has a very high debt load. Having rates as high as they were back in 2019 is much more severe than you might think simply because back then in 2019, the total debt to GDP ratio, in other words, a measurement of how how levered the U.S. economy is, was it was close to about 100, 105 percent. And now we're much higher. We're up at 125 
percent. And so the higher the debt to GDP, the more pain you get when um, when the Fed raises rates. So this makes it also what I'm arguing here is that we're very close to a terminal rate. We're already seeing CPI flatten month over month, as President Biden was pointing out. And these are all signs that along with the huge dip that asset prices have taken this year, these are all signs that the Fed is close to being done. I would say, especially this yield curve inversion, uh, which is extremely, extremely steep. So let's try to put these two things together. What I'm seeing here is one interpretation would be that the political narrative is being laid, that inflation is so low that the Fed can stop raising rates. President Biden can come out and say he's satisfied, there's 0% inflation. And what you can have is you can have the whole mainstream media and all social media spin this and sort of meme it into reality, even though it's not, it's technically true, but it's a very misleading way of reading the CPI. So if the White House is pleased, this also gives a lot, takes a lot of pressure off of the Fed to continue to hike conveniently a few months before the November midterm elections when the current uh, administration is really going to need good turnout for their party. The administration needs asset prices to rebound at least somewhat before that, before the November midterm elections, or it's going to look really bad what's going to happen in the House and the Senate. You can imagine what it would look like at the polls if we got a full-on market crash going into November. So I think it's safe to say that this is not going to happen. There's this political reality. Unfortunately, the Fed has not been neutral for many, many years. This isn't just a Democrat thing. There was uh, a lot of pressure on the Fed, obviously, from the Trump administration as well. But whatever happens, it doesn't matter which party is in office. We still have our slave masters in the form of the Fed. But what I'm arguing here is there's a lot less political pressure on the Fed now to keep hiking. So saying inflation that it is zero is a really stupid thing to say. It's quite Orwellian to do this kind of spin out of the out of the White House. But this is how clown world works. It works this way for both parties. And so what does this mean for the markets? I believe that in spite of today's negative price action, I believe that we've already seen the lows for Bitcoin, for the S&P, for the NASDAQ, for the stock indices. I believe that the lows of last month or the, the month before are already in. I would expect continuing weakening economic data for all of August. And then the next signpost we're gonna be watching to see if this hypothesis is true. And of course, I could be wrong about this. We're just reading the Fed tea leaves, but this is how I'm positioned and this is, um, this is what I believe. I would expect really dovish words from Jay Powell at Jackson Hole. There's this famous meeting at beautiful Jackson, Wyoming in which the Fed always um, speaks at the end of every summer. And historically, this has been a time when the Fed announces policy changes. Just for, just for some reason, it's always laid out this way. So we have, Powell's, uh, we have Powell speaking on August 26th at the Jackson Hole Economic Conference. I expect him to come out to be much dovish, much more dovish at that, at that point. That's just in a couple weeks from now. And I think what happens is that um, the market begins to realize that the lows are in. It looks like we will still get this hike in September, almost certainly, unless something really breaks before that. But one way of looking at these Fed funds futures is what's already priced in. So where asset prices are trading today, they are able to tolerate these, these two uh, probabilities of hikes, either a 50 basis point hike or a 75 basis point hike. And in all of this, it's important not to forget the big picture. The US government actually needs high inflation in order to reduce its debt load. Debt to GDP has reached a point now where it is so high that very bad things are going to happen unless the U.S. can get it back down. And there are two ways of doing this. You either reduce the level of your debt, which is just not possible because of government spending and all this entitlement spending we have with retirement of the, the older generations now. The other way is you just grow nominal GDP through inflation. You basically inflate your way out of debt so that the government can better service its debt. Because if the economy gets bigger because of inflation, GDP gets bigger, that is the base off which you take tax revenue, etc., and it allows you to better service your debt. The opposite tact, which would be bill tightening, it would be cutting government spending, etc., 
uh, or shrinking, actually shrinking the debt, this sort of belt tightening never works because you end up at this point in the cycle, you actually end up with a deflationary debt cycle. And if you're a politician or a central banker is pushing for this, you get voted out or kicked out very quickly. So what the Fed really wants to do here and what the US government needs, the Fed needs inflation to continue, possibly it's at second digit, uh, second digit levels. Uh, but without spooking the bondholder. So what we're trying to do here, what the Fed is trying to do, is to slowly boil those U.S. Treasury holders in their pot, but do it slowly enough that they don't jump out. We don't want to see U.S. Treasury prices crater and yields spike, interest rates spike too much. What we want is a slow burn where inflation stays above the rate that's paid on these treasuries. So these treasuries are yielding, the two, the, as we said, the two-year note's about 3.25%, the 10-year note's at 297 And what we need is to have inflation stay above these levels. This is how you boil the frog, and this is how you bring down debt to GDP levels. So there are many different competing factors here. There's the political factor. There's the long-term factor that we need to inflate our way out of the debt. And we will get to see in the next couple weeks exactly how Powell and the Fed navigate this. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.